Let's so start off, uh, Allison, with some fun facts. We'll kind of go around. Let's do it. So prior to working in tech at Foursquare in Google, Allison here toured the US and UK as the drummer for the indie rock band, The Vibrations. So tell us a little bit about that. You're, you're a rocker. Oh, you still get behind the drums? a long time ago. Um, no, because I can't fit drums in my small New York City apartment. So it's like a lost art form for me, but Were you guys like a, like a Beach Boys cover band? Um, no. Because no? hmm. oh, no. I've got like good vibrations. Oh. <laughs> no. Where's my just, Beach Boys uh, fans at? <laughs> Or were you guys like an original band? We were uh, like band? an original oh, band. very cool. But people always ask, are you a cover band? I don't know why. Because that's where the money is. Have yeah, you ever thought, though, that. about like a, a tech-themed band? Because over in Japan, they have like blockchain-themed uh, music. Like, uh, and I have not. One of our, one of our yeah. guests, right, was a, a crypto musician. Yeah. Hmm. She sold all her music. <laughs> this is her life. What am yeah. I doing with my life now? I should just walk out and start <laughs> over. This is a much better idea. Yeah. Yeah, so, you could be getting paid in tunes and cryptocurrency. <laughs> so let's move on to Melissa. Uh, so Melissa here built the human, humanitarian tech platform, The Toolbox, with legendary musician Peter Gabriel. So how did that come about? That certainly sounds like a very interesting part, tidbit, it on was. your resume. Yeah, Peter's a really remarkable man. Any Peter Gabriel music fans out there? Are you guys too young? I am, yeah. so, Genesis, right, the band Genesis. Uh, okay. Those videos I grew up hold the 80s, up. So, what are you talking about? Um, Phil Collins. So I, I'd always, I grew up listening to Peter's music when I was you know, young in the 80s, a um, <laughs> long time ago. but. Um, I was really became a fan of his through his activism. So he started a nonprofit called Witness um, maybe 15 years ago that, that trains people on how to document human rights violations. I became a big fan of his work through that. I met him at a benefit in Malibu about six years ago, and he's actually very soft-spoken and shy, and the more I talked, the more awkward the conversation became, and he just kind of ran away. <laughs> but eventually, um, I was at Soho House a few, couple years after that, and I met somebody. I was making some dumb joke about how the library in the Soho House at that time didn't have any books on the shelves, and somebody overheard me, and he started talking to me, and he said, what do you do? I said, I'm a journalist, and I help companies with their content strategy, pretentious way of saying storytelling. And he said, great. He said, you know, I'm building this, this tech platform with Peter Gabriel. And I said, great, I, I work at the intersection of tech and social change. And then that's how I got connected with Peter. And then I, I moved to London um, for something else. But um, moved to London, and Peter's British. And so we got to see each other about once a month and do a lot of cool things together. Um, one of the most remarkable brains I've ever interacted with in my life, he was working with MIT a few years back to build a search engine that allows animals to, to surf the internet. And people oh, wow. see you Wait. guys are laughing. Wait, like why? But, yeah. Why? why? Well, you know, that's what everybody else said was why the hell would well, you do that? Well, monkeys already take selfies, and, uh, right? So you have that selfie taken. He also uh, he also taught a gorilla how to play the piano. That's on video as well. But the 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 project the, the project to teach animals how to surf the internet was really he said. Wouldn't it be great if during the next natural disaster we could communicate with animals? Animals tend to know things before we do when it comes to Mother Nature, and wouldn't you like to be able to communicate with them? And I mean, a lot of his ideas seem really radical, but they make total sense if you break them down. And um, I like it. Yeah, does, I mean, does, I think it makes total sense. Does he own a dolphin sense. as yeah. well? I, I, I wonder what his take, his yeah. hot take is on, on flipper. On dolphins? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't talked to him about dolphins, what, but dolphins are sentient, aren't yeah. they? Whales yeah. are sentient. Yeah, so. they can recognize yeah. their own reflection. And they're very <laughs> horny animals. It's very true. They do. They're the they only have, other like, animals. They have, and stuff. They're That's the only other thing. animals other than yeah. humans that have sex for just pleasure. for fun, right? Yeah. 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 So on that note, uh, we're good with transitions here. Uh, <laughs> So, like, Dennis. dolphin search engines will be nothing but porn. <laughs> a, a dolphin will have to learn how to use the incognito tab. So, now that you lost money on your on your, uh, I can say all this crap you now. do uh, dolphinhub.com. Oh, my Thank lord. You. See what I'm saying? Another venture I'll invest in. <laughs> this one will take. So, uh, Dennis, you are the founder and chairman of the Kingston Stockade Football Club. So do tell us about that. How did that, how did that come about? Yeah, uh, football club is a fancy way of saying soccer team. And so, uh, you know, my wife and I spend a lot of time in the Hudson Valley, uh, specifically this town called Kingston, which is like two hours outside the city. And, um, you know, I was just kind of hanging out up there, thinking it would be really cool if you could just go to a soccer game up here and I could take my kids and my friends would come. And um, you know there was no such thing, so we said, "Hey, we'll just go make that thing." And so we started a soccer team from scratch. And this season will be our fourth season. We won our conference championship last year, so we have a trophy, which is super cool. 
And uh, you know, it's just a super like a super fun project, and it's like very meaningful for a lot of the people in the town. Like people rally around it. You know, a thousand people come to the games, um, and it's just like you know, it's it's a startup, but it's startup soccer instead of like startup tech. Yeah. Um, but really, like the two things together, like you're just building stuff that brings people together. Like all the stuff we ever made at Foursquare or the company I had before, Dodgeball, it was just about using your phone to get people together in one place so they could like talk and drink and laugh. And you know, the soccer team is just another way to get people together so they just like talk and drink and laugh. And it's all the same stuff, but it's just using different mechanisms to do so it. So li I like how you call it a startup. I mean, how do you, how do you see a soccer then kind of uh, transcending into that next level of popularity? I mean, that's always obviously been a struggle for, for soccer. So I mean, do you, have you, do you have any insight into that? Yes, uh, I'll give you the short answer to this, right? So like right now, like if you think about how like Facebook came out of the blue and just totally beat up MySpace and Friendster, and um, you know, uh, Google came out of the blue and beat up uh, Excite and Alta Vista and what was the other one? Yahoo, right? I almost forgot, what is Yahoo, right? Um, <laughs> and you know, like we, we're like, you know, the team that we're in and the league that we're in, we're like the underdogs and like the big company is the MLS. And so why can't we be like the underdog story that builds this amazing league that has a thousand teams in it? Yeah. And so that's like, I don't know, we're just kind of dreaming big and seeing how far can we push it before it either happens or it doesn't happen. It's the same stuff as a tech startup, it's just sure. a different world. That's yeah, really like, cool. It feels like the logical conclusion is having like a soccer club or football club. Yeah. Do you guys do anything differently than like traditional football clubs? Or are you just kind of invested in this already established thing? Well, it's just like it's super, like it's, it's, it's small, right? It's a thousand people show up. And you know we don't we don't pay the players. It's We're super kind of small. Right a thousand people show well, up. I, well, I mean, compared to like you know thirty thousand people that yeah. Like yeah. go see a totally, game totally. or something. But the thing that we've done that's been super interesting is like you know right before we started the club, I got on the internet and I typed in you know how do you start a soccer team from scratch and there was like zero results. And so I'm like, well, I could. Then you asked the dog the for help for his yeah. search engine. <laughs> yeah, right. No, so then we started writing like instruction manuals. If you want to do this, this is how you do it. And wow. you know, we were super transparent with all the financials and all the attendance data and how many T-shirts we sold on a Wednesday of the game in the rain. You know, all that stuff. And that helps other people go make versions of what we're doing all over the country. And now Very there's like cool. 20 other clubs that exist, which is fun. So now that we know a little bit about about everybody on yeah. stage, Allison, let's let's start off with you. Uh, when, when Joe and I uh, kind of mentioned to everybody uh, Amazon and everything that's going on with them moving to Queens, it seemed like people were kind of uh, against them. But love to kind of hear your perspective, uh, working in tech, how you think uh, how you think this deal uh, is going to affect New York, if it's going to be good for the the tech community. So what's kind of your your hot take uh, on the Amazon deal so far? Yeah, I don't know. I've been reading a lot of different. All of the people I follow on Twitter, everybody's take is like, this sucks, this is bad. Um, Normally, it's a, it's a big that, deal where people are, are positive about yeah, it. Yeah, I think that means I just follow coming. the right people on Twitter who are willing to be critical and like thoughtful about this type of stuff instead of just like, yay, jobs. Um, but the thing I think that I, I hope that doesn't get lost is that it's a good time for New York to ask for a lot of Amazon. Like mm. if they're coming here and this is already done, like what are you gonna build for us? Um, <coughs> so they were given a lot of money to come here. So it's like people are making jokes about the subway crumbling and all of this stuff, you know, like what are they gonna do for the city of New York? So I think um, it's really cool that New York is getting bigger of a tech scene, but um, we already have such a big, great tech scene. I think the question is more like, what are they going to bring to the city other than those jobs? You know, because I don't think those jobs are um, as as much of a like a mm -hmm. complete so amazing thing that people think. Do you think we're, we're too aggressive, Melissa? I'd love to kind of hear you chime in on this. Do you think we're too aggressive then trying to woo? Uh, Amazon because uh, Andrew Cuomo, right? He said, "Hey, you know, to paraphrase, I would change my name to uh, Amazon uh, Cuomo." Uh, so he was obviously very, very for uh, this deal. Melissa, what's uh, what's been your kind of take so do far? Do I th do I think New York was too aggressive to woo Amazon over here? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yeah, and then also kind of with what Allison was talking about, if, if, if this is going to be a good or uh, a negative for, for New York. I don't know. I mean, I see... I see I we see like to a, make a lot of predictions I see a few. Show. I see a few different angles for it, right? I mean, uh, last night I was on the plane from Paris, and there were some New Yorkers in front of me, obviously, and they were talking about the whole Amazon deal, and they're saying, this is the worst thing to happen to New York City. So, and I don't, I don't necessarily think they worked in tech, and they, I think just people in the surrounding area don't think it's good just for the city itself that it's going to take over. Um, but at the same time, 
time, it's good to have industry, it's good for jobs, it's good to have a high profile company. I mean, I think New York has enough of those <laughs> at the same time. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I mean, um, you know, I mean, I think this time will tell. Allison, you were mentioning that uh, what is Amazon going to do for New York, but it seems the state and the city gave huge tax incentives. Do you think that may have been too much? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think they should have done that. Yeah. Um, I think that it's going to be a big problem, especially in Queens, in your neighborhood, for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like, any time people make too much of a prediction about New York, I'm a native New Yorker, I'm like, you know what? The city survives everything. It yeah. flows with everything. It just grows differently. So um, I don't think it's going to, like, really ruin anything for yeah. tech. But I think it will be difficult for the people in Queens. I think it will make rents really high. I think that was one of like the last affordable boroughs to some degree um, and that that will change. And yeah, yeah. Not, not totally affordable, <laughs> but um, yeah. the Bronx is still cheaper. I used to live in the Bronx. Um, oh, cool. Nobody wants to go all the way up there. Um, also, New Yorkers, I feel like they're, they're, we're, we don't like change. We don't like the city to change. Every New Yorker has a story of like, oh, this is how it was five years ago, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, whatever. And just the, uh, the smallest amount of change freaks people out. Just because there's so much happening already in your life that you have to deal with that you don't want something else to change, right? So I can see, I can see how, uh, you know, I, I, my ignorance is in the way of me making a uh, um, thoughtful reaction, but at the same time, I hate it so much. <laughs> this isn't you know. the first, it's also important to note, this isn't the first um, company of that size to come here. Totally. Google is, I used to work at Google, Google is gigantic, and they're just buying up like- Chelsea Market. Every right? building, yeah, and then Market. in front of that, there's the barge on the water that they're buying, and I'm kind of like, what's next? Yeah. Is there gonna be a floating island that they build? I mean, there's in, then they're in Jersey, like, that's it. Um, so you, they'll buy Staten Island? They can buy Staten Island, we'll give that to them. <laughs> <laughs> they can have that for free. So, Be so careful what you wish for. Right. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's That's gonna hear that on the podcast and like you're gonna get a check from Larry. That's very like, true. Yeah. So Dennis, do you think Amazon is, is surprised about this reaction? Because it seems like if everybody else is, is kind of a, a good kind of cross section of the population, that people are, are kind of negative. So I imagine if Amazon uh, chose Queens that they kind of expected to, to be greeted with flowers, right? Like like Rummy said. I mean, didn't they? They must have expected a different reaction. I mean, wh what do you think happened? Did they strategically uh, do something wrong? I, I, it's, a, it's a it's a good question. You know, I, actually, I didn't even hear that New York was in the running for it. I think we all just assumed that like they're not going to put it in New York. Like Amazon's going to do some good for the world by right. putting it in an area yeah. that has like a, a like a, a, a seed of a tech ecosystem, and they're going to be the fertilizer that helps make it grow. Like Denver. Like like, like anywhere but yeah. New York, right? <laughs> um, and and DC, right? You know, like <clears throat> that that's that's the that was the move. Like not like the, the the New York thing. I think is the laziest thing you could possibly do. I think if you're a tech if you're a tech worker, it's it's good because there's more jobs and higher salaries. If you hire tech workers, it's bad because there's more competition, right? If you live in Queens, it's probably awful uh, because you have to commute and all that other nonsense. But like. Um, I, I don't. I would imagine that they just think of it as like, well, how, what, what do you mean people don't want us in their backyard? But we're Amazon. Uh, that that would be my my guess. Are but, they in like a bubble? Do you think that that's why they don't realize it? Um, or did they did they not do like a ground game of trying to test the you know tech, check the temperature of the water? I, I don't I don't know because I, I, before it was announced, and maybe I'm just like totally in the dark, but I didn't hear anything about them sniffing around New York. Like was that was that a thing? It was, it was DC. It was, it, it was, yeah, and I was, was like, oh DC. man, that's gonna be rough for DC. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know, but like I uh, I just didn't hear anything about it. It was the last thing on my mind, and when it came out, I thought it, like I didn't think that was the decision that was made. Uh, so I, I, I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if they're like, I, I can't believe that people wouldn't want this. How could you not see it as a good thing? I wonder if it was that like reverse psychology with like dating where like everybody was trying to woo them so hard that they started disrespecting these like <laughs> cities that were basically like, we'll give you They were nagging breaks. the cities. And they're like, fine, we'll go to New York. Also, Nobody why cares. Are, why they don't are you even paying like for us. anything? Like why, why, why is New York giving breaks? Like they should be yeah. begging us to be in New York, right? Yeah. They should be granting permission. It's tougher for residents. There's just so much 
gentrifying going on and so much of just a displacing of people and people are changing neighborhoods because uh, lower working class people are getting pushed farther out away from the city and uh, you know, I don't want to be like that person that's like, oh, we're losing our culture or whatever, you know, because New York kind of is a place of immigrants and is a place of change, but it feels like it's becoming San Francisco, kind of. What happened to San Francisco? Well, that is a good segue for, for really the topic of discussion, right? I wish I ended that on a joke or something, but I was just <laughs> sadness. <laughs> I don't think New York will ever be San Francisco, yeah. by the way, though. You know, because I think the best thing that the New York tech scene has is the fact that tech, even with Amazon here and Facebook and Snap and Twitter and Google, you know, we're, tech is still like the fourth or fifth most important thing, but behind like, you know, media and publishing and fashion and, you know, advertising and music, like it's, it's somewhere in the middle of those things and that's what makes New York awesome. And so, you know, other, other cities that have you know, a, a, a growing tech scene, like kind of, you know, there, there's, sometimes it kind of overtakes the culture and identity of the city. I think that's what happened to San Francisco. So, I mean, given that we have idea. a good mode around that. I yeah, think. I mean, given that idea that, that sometimes in, in, in greater San Francisco, uh, that can be like the only show in town, do you think that creates this kind of like echo chamber, uh, if you will, where, where nobody really gets the, the natural kind of checks and balances? Awesome. Uh, 100%, think? I think yeah. you see that from, yeah, go. Um, okay. Oh, no, no, no. yes. Anybody, yeah. <laughs> the answer is yes. It okay. creates an echo chamber for sure. I think that's one of the reasons people actually like to move to New York and you can woo a candidate to your startup in New York is a lot of people get burned out on like the only conversations at every coffee shop in San Francisco is about tech and everybody's talking about raising money and it's like then you come here and you can go out and meet people who are doing all different kinds of things and that's actually really awesome and so I think yeah people hate that about San Francisco I think right like people are burnt out about that you want to talk well to especially about lately Go. especially sorry especially lately from when I lived in San Francisco in 2001 2002 and then I lived there again 2009 2010 each time was very brief but now when I go back or when I talk to friends that still live there they say that it's been completely gentrified the mission district which had a lot of local culture and immigrants and, and, and flavor and grit is completely just catering to white 30 year old male entrepreneurs and a lot of people that are not in the tech scene there are a few in San Francisco that are in the tech scene actually really don't like it so I mean, one of the points, one of the reasons why it seems like uh, certain people might decide to go elsewhere outside of uh, greater San Francisco or, or Silicon Valley uh, has been like, a higher cost of, of living and also the, the transportation issues. At the same time, here we were just talking about Amazon, which might affect the cost of living and transportation, mm -hmm. transportation issues. So how do you see that affecting the New York uh, City tech scene? Do you see that as a, as a major concern or you think that the We're going to get overrun with scooters. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your take on scooters? Is that, is that something that's going to... Uh, that has been this like whole scooter madness. thing, I've been like, I haven't been to San Francisco in like over a year, so I just, I don't even know what these scooters are all about. I'm, I'm very in my New York bubble and protected from this. Can and I, I'm grateful for that. I have an opinion. Please, I, I, please. I, what's I, your opinion on the last mile? I think that's what they, they call that category, right? I kind of I, I kind of like the scooters. I, I hear people hate them because they're everywhere, right? You just kind of leave them on the street. I love just... It's like legally littering <laughs> and I, I like the idea of like using something and then just like bye we have the city bike here right uh but you know it's fine i used it for a couple of years but the scooter thing i walk around the city i would ride my bike around but i love the idea of like using a scooter to get around going over the bridge anyways that's my take <laughs> let's edit this part out <laughs> no i like it I like we yeah. get sponsored by uh bird what's the company it, uh, bird right bird yeah are there so some with an L? Uh, Lime? Lime bikes. And Lime bikes, yeah. They, yeah. they have scooters. Would you ride a scooter well? over the bridge? Oh, totally. You would never be able to ride one of those scooters. You'd get blown off the bridge in like a second. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's the no risk, no reward, man. <laughs> I love riding my bike over the Queensboro Bridge. It's my favorite thing to do in the city, especially like riding from the city back to Queens because uh, it's such a tough city to ride in. And it's When you make it to the bridge, you tell yourself, like, I survived the traffic, and you... Ride over the bridge, and then when you're kind of coasting down, you just look over at Queens. Everyone loves the, the view of Manhattan. That's fine. I love the view of looking over Queens, riding down into the city. It's one of the most beautiful things, especially That's coming over. That's something the Amazon could pay for. Oh God, they're gonna ruin no. that too! I didn't even they think of city that. bike, free city bike for everybody, paid for by Amazon. It would be, it would be very easy. 
Uh, yeah. It would be one nice thing they could do. They need to start cool. thinking about things like that. Because I know city do. bike sponsors, obviously the city bikes in this, uh, this city, I wonder if Amazon will do something to be like, hey, here's, we got a billion dollars in tax you know, relief, so might as well throw some pennies at you guys. But Allison, I, I like what you, I'm not bitter about I, I, I like what you said about like, the bikes and, and things like that. So obviously Amazon is paying attention to this backlash. So how do they, how do they flip that around? If you, were, if you were Amazon, what would you do to... Uh, I guess curry the goodwill of, uh, of everybody here today. How do I you get them on? I mean, there's a lot summer. of just things they can do that are real. Like, buy up a bunch of buildings and, like, let homeless people live in them. <laughs> like, radical ideas okay. of just, like, giving back. You know, they just need to give back a yeah. lot to the community. Or just lo build low-cost housing, a big problem in San Francisco. Um, and they, like, cannot get low-cost housing mm -hmm. or even medium-cost housing for people. So they could do stuff like that. I mean, they could just I – mean, these are not hard things to do when you have that kind of money. So do you think they will? Melissa, I mean, do you think from Amazon's perspective they, they will take, like, a, a charm offensive? Um, if I were the head of corporate social responsibility, <laughs> be putting some kind of strategy or plan to do something good for New York City. Absolutely, absolutely. I think they will. I feel like they're gonna do something novel that actually doesn't have actual impact. <laughs> I think they're gonna, I think they're gonna, they're gonna, gonna put up billboards saying like, look what we did, we paved a sidewalk here's, here's in a neighborhood nobody goes to. Here's my prediction, is that everybody in Queens is going to get an Amazon Prime membership. And they're just gonna, I know, <laughs> you seriously, know that's probably what's gonna happen. Spend your money my, with my that. Words. We, we said it on the, on the podcast. And it's if they deliver it like same day, like order something and like, like an hour might... later, okay. that could be something cool. What, what would you think if you got your uh, Amazon Prime? Like a drone okay. comes to what, my what, apartment what, window and I just open her up and, you know, get whatever yeah. I ordered. So my I guess Xbox you're, controller or you're whatever. You're still wooable. So that's that's. I'm good. always wooable. I never close the door. <laughs> so so uh, I'm so easily corruptible. I'd be a great politician. Well, we want to we move on though about about uh, Amazon. <laughs> um, we're, we're talking really about innovation. The New York City tech hub here. Uh, the the CEO of Google recently said to the New York Times that quote. There is nothing inherent that says Silicon Valley will always be the most innovative place in the world. Allison, what do you what do you think about that? Because we're always trying to get and Melissa, I saw you trying to jump in there, or if you want to start us off, but like I was just, just going to say, it's not the most innovative place in the world. Silicon oh, okay. Valley thinks it's the most innovative place in the world. So you're already That's throwing the my, down yeah. for that. Okay. Yeah, I just, I mean, I'm sure a lot of my panel or my my, it's not a man, it's not a mantle, thank God, a mantle. I, no, I learned no earlier today that here. a mantle is just like yeah, an all, all white male. panel. Yeah. It's not a mantle, but I'm sure my fellow panelists and a lot of the audience members who travel a lot, if you if you visit startup ecosystems around the world, some of the most innovative and interesting ideas are coming. From from obscure places and countries that most people in the Western world don't even know have a startup community, right? Like places like Lebanon or Syria, Iceland, Africa. There's a huge innovation hub in Africa. There's the most interesting ideas are coming from these countries because the entrepreneurs there are, are innovating out of survival. They're creating companies because they don't have a choice. They're in war zones or they've got the refugee crisis right at their doorstep. So, I mean, if I see another app come out of Silicon Valley that tells me where to take my dog to take a dump, I just, I can't, I'm not that that's not useful, that's very helpful information if you have a dog and you love your animal, but I just mean, these companies these, these are getting huge series A rounds and I just think, you know, there's, there's, there's companies in the Middle East that are doing amazing things to actually help people survive and, and there are business models and they could be replicated for America as well. So, so do you I have some thoughts on this. Going back to, well, there you go. Uh, go ahead. Going to, to New York then, do you think, and anybody can, can jump in, do you think that New York is going to be more focused on these real world problems that are, that are more important than just dog poop? I think there is more creativity in the business ideas in New York, and I think that's um, largely due to what Dennis was saying if he, earlier, that you know New York is media, it's fashion, it's tech, it's finance, it's art, it's everything, it's all these great industries wrapped into, into one throbbing city, whereas uh, Silicon Valley, and this is no offense to Silicon Valley, there's obviously amazingly brilliant people there, but it's, it's um, you know... Please do some offense, it's better for no, the No, no, I mean, it, it, but it's, it's the micro bubble is Silicon Valley. Each, every big city has its own micro bu bubble and its own micro lens. LA has one. I lived there for seven years. You know, there's, there's a lot of different, we all have micro lenses in our different environments, but um, I think what makes New York great is the diversity, not just in culture and in class of people, but in, in the industries and in the, in, the indus in, the, in the desires to do different things and to build different things. Um, there's a saying that someone said to me years ago, and I don't know if she made this up, 
she said she heard this in a movie or she read it in a book, but the saying is that smart people move to San Francisco, ambitious people move to Los Angeles, and smart and ambitious people move to New York City. And having lived in all three cities, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Mm. Wow, I like it. Yeah, I, I really do agree with what you're saying in regards to like New York is a great place that's, it puts you outside your bubble. You're, you're forced to interact with people that are not you and people that are not like you. And I think that's why, you know, people, New Yorkers get a bad rap for being, you know, uh, curt or like, uh, you know, short tempered or whatever. But they're the, like the most tolerant people in the world because they deal with everyone. Yeah. You know, sometimes they don't sound like it because they say some horrible things. <laughs> but like, uh, you know, we all have to live together and we all, we all are forced to, uh, uh, to kind of uh, uh, interact with one each other and it's, it creates this really unique, interesting, weird, great city. But in order for that to happen though, we would need to have a subway that, that's reliable. So one thing I've always, well it's true, right? And one thing I've always been kind of fascinated. I said something beautiful and you just no, no, no. cut it off at the knees. I was, it, was, it, was, it was getting too positive. That's I had to, true, I know. I, I was like, I feel hopeful. Oh yeah, I have to ride the subway back home after this. No, but, but see, here's where it's hopeful though, right? Is, yeah. is because here we are teeming with talent and, and, and innovative thinking. But at the same time, we're all saying, well, the subway has problems. Right? It's an old subway, a lot of issues. Uh, so how can we redirect some of this talent and this passion to focus on a real world problem, which is the subway? Right? What, what needs to change in order for maybe civic tech or, or things like that to really, really take hold? Does anybody have well, can I just jump in? The subway is yeah, controlled please. by the state. The subway is right. controlled by yeah. the city. So anything that happens with the subway needs to be taken up with Amazon upstate. With Cuomo, yeah. Yeah, with Cuomo. Yeah. All that, you know, so I don't know why I brought this up, but that's a big problem. Like, uh, the well, city true. wants something, but it's really like the whole state of New York has to come together okay. to fix this issue. Well, and a lot of people in New York don't come to the city, so they're like, why am I going why to why am I gonna vote on something or why am I going to uh, support a candidate? It's talking about something that's 100 miles away. Okay. Well, I think your question is like, what can we do to get more people involved in mission-oriented companies that will solve yeah. New York problems yeah. and real-world problems and things like that? And I think um, there are a lot of people who want to do that kind of work. One thing that's really hard and that, you know, that we're talking about Amazon and um, talent is, like, they grab all the talent for solving these problems from a tech angle. And then that gets really hard if you're, like, a startup or you're partly you know, only seed funded or something, it's really hard to compete with Google who's paying people these high salaries. And I think a lot of people are worried about that with Amazon now too. Like now we have another one who's gonna be able to throw a lot of money at the most talented engineers and designers and I think that's what smaller startups are worried about. Yeah. So you're basically saying that like the, the talent that would focus on these real world problems gets kind of tempted by this dangling yeah. kind of carrot, yeah. which is the high salaries yeah. that, that are kind of- really hard to recruit away from that. That's one of the big problems with recruiting in New York is like the big companies will take up all the talent and then we gotta get new people to move in. Okay, so how do you think we, we solve some of those, those potential problems? Uh, it's a big problem, I don't know. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm not afraid to say I don't know. Yeah. I don't how, know. how do we solve this like, kind bigger, of tech? Bigger budgets, bigger budgets for those projects that need the work. Like no one's gonna take a job if they're gonna be under-resourced and not gonna be able to do their job. You know, I had, um, I saw on Twitter the other day, like, a very talented engineer buddy of mine on Twitter musing publicly about, I want to take the job to be the CTO of the MTA and trying to figure out how to do that. And it's like, oh my gosh, this person should totally end up doing that. But like, will that person end up getting into that gig? Do, will they have the resources to succeed? Is the job interesting enough? Will the bureaucracy push them out of it? Like, there's all these things where it's like, it's almost, you know, it, it, those are those are tough tough jobs to take for for a bunch of different reasons, and it doesn't seem to be a group that's making those jobs easier for qualified people to take. It's also hard to move when you're used to the comforts of working in tech to go back to because I used to work for the government, and it's like it's not fancy, you know. And you're used to like free snacks and having everything paid for you. It is hard to go back to that, but I think people do want more interesting jobs and would be interested in those. I think VCs could actively fund more companies who are doing good work um, and then they have more in their budgets to hire away well, from people like, look like at that. Look at the example that like Uber and Lyft 
um, like more, more so Uber sets, where it's like, okay, the taxi system is broken, no one's gonna fix it, so we will just you know, knowingly break the rules to go out and fix it. You wanna fine us? That's fine, we'll take the fines. We're still making so much money by fixing the problem that's still illegal for us to, to fix. And you know, they've like, you can say that's like overly aggressive and gave them a really bra bad brand, but like they, they fix the problems in, in lots of places. Now you can do that for cars because you just go buy a car and get someone to drive it. You can't do that for the subway. Yeah, you, you can't, can't do illegally that add trains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe we can. Maybe that's our destiny, is that we just sneak in tonight and add some of them on. Where we get Elon Musk doing like the underground yeah. tunnels. Yeah. Yeah. The, but that, that's also. super interesting. Like yeah, Elon's yeah. idea of like, you saw the tunnel that he built in LA. It's like, okay, let's, let's forget about going 100 feet deep. Let's go, you know, whatever, 1,000 feet deep, and we'll just build these huge tunnels that aren't going to disrupt anything. And then I'll put my own private network of stuff under there. And have you guys seen like the, the Hyperloop. Well, not, not just Hyperloop, but like the concentric ring of cities that go around. It's like, this is what we'll do to LA. And you look at it and you're like, holy cow, that's how you turn an archaic city into a modern city. Like when you watch like Star Wars, right? The, in, in, like the new Star Wars. And the, in the, the spaceship comes down and lands on the awesome planet. Like all the cities are rings like that. Like, gosh, how do they make all those rings? That must be the way to do it. And then, but you look at our cities, we'll never do that. We're not going to blow up the city and redo it, right? But what, what if you just did it underground? And I think that's what they're talking about doing. And it goes from being crazy to being realistic, right? Like that's, maybe that's a way to fix it. Am I sounding crazy? Maybe. No, I mean, I like say it. what you want about, uh, you know, the a silence lot of people. is like, shut up, everyone. No, <laughs> no. A lot of people like to crap on Elon Musk, but the guy does inspire. He really does. He's crazy, but like he inspires, you know. Well, he just needs to work on his tech etiquette. Yeah, and stop selling like flamethrowers <laughs> to like can, fun stuff. But there's like a no. big difference between like I get on stage at a TED talk and I inspire, but you know the difference between that and like I just dug a tunnel ten thousand feet. Un 